Tokyo. The very name commonly brings to mind images of crowds, skyscrapers, neon lights, and trains. But there's another, less known Tokyo. A Tokyo of vast, forested mountains, wide, watered valleys, a Tokyo of flowing streams, narrow trails, and waterside campsites, a Tokyo of verdant nature. On a crisp early December morning, I got off at the terminal station in the remote northwestern edge of Tokyo Prefecture, in a quaint rural town enveloped by miles of sheer wilderness. Here, my first destination was Hikawa Camping Grounds, a facility located in a wooded gorge with numerous lodges and cabins for rent, as well as, and much cheaper, a beautiful riverside tent site. I tented up and unloaded some supplies. Then, it was hiking time. Starting from the camping grounds, I would hike along a trail known as the Mokashimichi, which snakes through 10 or so kilometers of mountainous terrain and finishes at the shores of the Lake Okutama. From the lake, I would catch a bus back to Hikawa and spend the night camping by the river. With a pack on my back, I was off to adventure. I soon discovered an abandoned railway. The Mukashimichi, literally the old road, is part of a once bustling historic route called the Koshu Urakaido that connected Ome in Tokyo with Kohu in Yamanashi. Many relics of that past still pepper the trail. Check this out, this is pretty cool. Look at this. It's some kind of a sliding contraption. Great, fathomless mountains stretching out as far as the eye can see. I can only marvel as I hike, constantly reminding myself that I'm hiking in Tokyo. Yep, it might surprise you, but this is Tokyo. One encounters quiet settlements every now and then along the trail. Many of these correspond to old pit stops in a historic road, often featuring old landmarks and shrines. So oddly enough, here it says don't cross with more than five people at the same time. Here it says don't cross with more than two. 
so probably this one is the updated version. The Queen suspension bridge led to a dead end on the other side, but provided some nice river views. The boards creaked underfoot and did not at all inspire confidence, so I didn't stay for long. It was well past lunchtime by now, and I hadn't yet found a good resting spot to eat. So this is apparently where travellers used to let their horses rest and drink some water. There also used to be uh, quite a few tea houses here, and they would sell stuff like udon and even cigarettes and sake and stuff like that. Kind of a resting spot for the journey. Of course, the tea houses are no longer around. I guess it's nice that there's a resting area for horses, but I need a resting area for humans right now, because I need to eat lunch. Soldiering on, I encountered a modernized tea house, even with some English catchphrases, but it was closed. A rest stop was available further up, but... So it turns out that there is a resting spot for humans when it's occupied. <laughs> Whatever man, I'm a solo traveller. I'm just gonna randomly sit, plop myself somewhere and start eating. <laughs> Today's convenience store selection. Okay. Stopping to rest in a shaded area in December is a mistake because I feel cold now. Another rustic suspension bridge for another precarious view of the river. This one didn't seem too much steadier. The sunlight acquired a golden hue as evening approached. I still had a good bit of hiking left, but an important landmark soon loomed into view, like a proof of my progress. The trail led me to a high vantage, where I caught my first good glimpse of the Lake Okutama. final section, a series 
of long, winding switchbacks that led down to the shore. <sighs> yep, I'm done. That was fun. Finishing a good hike is always a great feeling. And here, at the end, a golden sunset was playing out over the glistening waters of the lake. That's deer katsu curry. Very, very tempting. At last, it was time to settle the camp and prepare for a relaxing evening outdoors. See the bridge up there? You wanna know what's on the other side? Well, why tell you when I can show you? Well, this bridge is of course much steadier than the hanging bridges on the trail. In Japan, hiking and hot springs are often inseparable. A match made in heaven, if you ask me. Man, that felt so good. It's a clear night. Oh man, I hope it stays this way. So I'm feeling really darn good right now. You know what will make me feel better? A fire. No wind tonight, fingers crossed. Please! Once before, I had tried to start a fire, with disappointing results. Time to make dinner.
6 a.m. One thing about this campsite, not sure if it's the river or whatever, is that the condensation is insane. A decent night. The sleeping bag is great. Oop. Time to start the day. I woke to a cloudy but peaceful, cold morning and found frozen evidence of some rain that had fallen over the night. Thankfully, I had saved a bit of firewood for now. The morning was a beautiful end to the trip, and with this end shall come more beginnings. You know what's the downside of having a decent sleeping bag? When I woke up this morning, I was like, oh man, the whole world outside my sleeping bag is so cold. I didn't want to get out. And then I had to use the bathroom, so I got up anyway. <laughs> 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 